in the same way by watching the story that he's making in the story to relate to it so so the audience relates to it so we know how to relate to it but still relate to it in our own way and then we can okay, show it Tom, to our neighbors, friends, big, brothers, big kids. Yes, yeah, so I'm yeah. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome back to the Anime Summit Podcast. It's your favorite host of the most, Sam the Bomb. And of course, with me every week is Danny. Hello, hello. Nick. Shibbity hip. Shibbity hip. And uh, welcome to another edition of Cinematography. Let me tell you why. Because, <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's not like an actual cinematography episode, but it could be. Um, we're talking about the anime film Pompo the Cinephile by Studio Clap. Oh, you clap for the universe. <laughs> That's the theme song I wrote for Studio Clap. Studio Clap, if you're listening. Wait, Studio Clap. Take there that. St- I'm trying take- to do it without peeking the mic. <laughs> take- <laughs> you were trying to clap just now? Yeah. Uh, take that in the studio and it goes to number one. Okay. Wait, did, um, did you hear that when I did that? I didn't that hear such it. A quiet- that was such a quiet clap. Let's try this again. Okay, I heard that. I heard that. Okay. Heard yeah, yeah, I heard that. I'm looking at my at my waveforms. It's not that much. You just try to clap, yeah. Yeah. For, I'm, I'm know, going man. overly quiet. It's a really quick peak. It's really weird. Um, <laughs> recording a podcast is funny, guys. I promise. No. <laughs> Dude. Wait, we're all recording, right? We're not going to just lose an hour of <laughs> recording. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude. Oh, man. Podcast horror stories. For all of my fellow podcasters out there who are listening, uh, tell tell me your 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 podcast horror story. I'd love to hear it. No, dude. Um, yeah, we're gonna talk about the movie Pompo the Cinephile today. Came out in twenty twenty one. I probably should have reviewed it back then when it came out because I was excited for it. Um, but we just got around to it, and man, it's a cool film. So we're gonna talk about that today. So let's just jump right in. Links.AnimeSummit.net. That's where you can go to subscribe and listen. Follow everywhere. Follow Anime Plummet as well. And uh, uh, subscribe to the YouTube, all that good stuff. And leave us a review or answer our questions on Spotify. And follow us on Spotify as well. Get us to more followers on Spotify. Leave a review on Spotify. If you can, we'll read your reviews on Spotify. I would love that. So do that. And then speaking of Spotify, let me tell you about this really quick. And there you go. Uh, I'm going to hand it over to Danny because we got an upcoming app and we need help from the patrons. The patrons. Um, yeah, so uh, to all our patrons, um, yesterday, was it yesterday? Sunday. I posted it Sunday on our Discord. And there is a Google Sheet, which is our uh anime recommendation form and pretty much what we're asking is for your recommendations so it's kind of like it's kind of like our our show swaps except we're not swapping shows uh you the patrons are just recommending us anime for us to watch whether it's a tv show or a movie um so, and we're just going to grab a bunch of them. I'm going to put them on a, like, wheel simulator generator, and I'm just going to spin the wheel and then pick whichever the wheel stops on. That's the anime we'll be watching, and we'll review it later on. So, um, yeah. So, definitely, uh, Sam should have already posted the form on Patreon. So uh, if you're not on Discord or anything like that, head to our Patreon and find that Google form and give us a recommendation. I did update the form a little bit um, because there have been some things that have been going on and I just want to keep this a little bit more organized. Like, (laughs) I understand this is going to be all fun, but um, a little bit more organization and I don't want to feel super overwhelmed with all of the things that you guys have been Is there a limit, 
a episode limit. What is that? Oh yeah, for the recommendation. Um, I would say probably. The ballpark. It doesn't so have to be exact, okay, but. so if someone so so if you someone recommends. can't recommend One Piece. <laughs> well, that's the thing. So here, here's the thing. I don't think One Piece is is a, a good recommendation because that'll take forever for all of us to watch. Um, but if it has multiple um, seasons, I would say just recommend us the first season. Oh, okay, it. gotcha. Yeah. So okay, about a season's worth. Hi, okay. I'm looking at you. Do not. I re- I already. Yeah, we're not watching it up. every precure and Literally, every dory. Literally, he put like he he. Yeah, I, I already got on his case for that though. So, but <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna make like a Google um a spreadsheet and just organize the shows that everyone recommends so that it will be a little bit more neater on our end. But yeah, a season's worth um, if it does have multiple episodes and stuff like that. Just do the first season. I know if it is your favorite show or anything like that, we get it. We, you want us to watch the whole thing. However, just give us the first season. Let, let's let just start with that first. And if yeah, we like it, the then, maybe, down. then maybe we'll go through the other seasons. But let's just do a first season first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 so thirteen to twenty some eps if that's the first you know yeah, season or whatever. Yeah. yeah, okay. Could be shorter. Could be a movie too. That's what. <laughs> so I, I did just update. Um, I added a few more things on the Google form, and I did add like a little um, tab that says, "Is it a show or a movie?" So yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. thank you, Danny. Hell yeah! So go do that. Okay. Also, another thing this I want to mention: this is a Patreon exclusive. Just so you know, like. Not everyone can do it. So if, you know, you're not a Patreon that, and you want us to watch a show that you might not, might find out that we may rec- uh, watch it and review it, head to our Patreon and become a Patreon so that you'll be able to participate. Which is on the links. Yes. I also want to mention that I was on the plummet recently with Sen and we did a Studio Spotlight, Studio 4C. That was really fun. Um, so you should go check that out. We'll upload it to our feed soon here. Whenever one of, remember, whenever one of us is on each other's podcast, the plummet or the summit or the plummet or the tummy or the yummit of the hummet, um, then it'll be uploaded to both feeds with that podcast art, so you know where it originated, and then such. So I'll I'll put that on our feed as well if you hadn't heard it yet. Otherwise, go to Links Anime Summit and just click on Anime Plummet, and it'll take you right there. Uh, listener question of the week, Nick. Oh God, you surprised me. This is from Snowman, and he asks, which anime would you recommend to your parents if you knew they were going to watch the whole thing? Uh, he said his dad watched Vinland Saga, and he is loving it. Oh, nice. I would also pick Vinland Saga, but beside, I'll think of something else, too. What do you guys think? So, um, <laughs> I don't think my mom would watch anime. I don't know. <laughs> you got to pick mom... something, Danny. You can't dodge a question. I, uh... would, I would probably just recommend her to watch the studio ghibli movies because the they, you gotta pick one movie pick one movie to start um <laughs> uh, la, 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 spirited away <laughs> even though that's a weird one oh, <laughs> she that's a weird one danny all right really you're gonna weird. fail you're gonna fail <laughs> all right okay so i'm stern danny already lost <laughs> um my mom likes animals a lot so maybe i should do some face johnson's i don't know i'll tell her to watch uh catch it buddies. one catch it one <laughs> My mom does like war dramas too, so she might like what Catch It One. I don't know. Yeah, Catch It One. My dad, I don't know. My dad, entertainment to him is like he doesn't really watch like TV. He watches movies sometimes. I probably would just make him watch a movie. A well, what, wait, movie. what does he do then? Plays Farmville. Okay. <laughs> yeah, in the gardens. <laughs> oh, there's farm isekais. That counts. There you go. Far- some kind of farming isekai. Oh, yeah. Like, probably like fucking There's a bunch farm. of them. <laughs> yeah, dude. What about you, Nick? What would you do? Okay, I like Snowman's answer, Vinland Saga. That's a good one. That I is a good one. I would also pick... Uh, that's a good one. I would pick Cowboy Bebop. I think they might like that. Oops. I deleted something on the show sheet. Uh, I would just say Cowboy Bebop. I'd start with that. I was gonna say your parents like that. I'd probably like that. low key or uh, any any Satoshi Khan movie. Oh, so, yeah. so Millennium I, Actors. I low key would probably recommend my uncle to watch Cowboy Bebop. 
I feel like he would like that because that's not the question, Danny. That's parents. I know, I know, but he, he I mean, he kind of <laughs> raised kidding. me. I lived with him for a little bit, so plus he's a jazz musician, so I think he would like. Oh the jazz well, part. yeah, oh, that's a good answer. Good answer. Good answer. The doy. <laughs> All right, what yeah. we got? Wife Unho's bando, Danny. I'm um, Sam now. You're Sam now. <laughs> Look at me. I'm the captain now. <laughs> Um, waifu is Joelle. I'm not even gonna pronounce her full name. Uh, but it's 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 Pompo, the producer, and then husbando is Jean Feeney, aka Mr. Feeney. That's not Feeney. how you spell. That's not how you spell Mr. Feeney's name, though. Feeney. <laughs> Feeney. <laughs> Feeney. Ooh, that was a new one. Oh yeah, from yeah, it's actually F E. And actually, yeah. his name is pronounced Jine. Jine. <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Got to do that every time. Yeah, Joel D. <laughs> it turns out that she's the Will of D from One Piece. Um, because in the in the movie, it doesn't say her full name until like later. But like, yeah. oh, they had, a, they had a live action One Piece trailer, by the way, which was dope. It, it looks, was sick. It looks like a live action anime. I, I don't know. I, I have never seen or read One Piece. <laughs> it looks like One Piece, which is really cool. Uh, some people didn't like Monkey D. Luffy. Uh, okay, Luffy, save it for the One Piece podcast. You can never, you can never do it though. Like you can't translate anime to real life. It just doesn't fucking work. You can unless you do it like that, and I think it's gonna work. I think it's gonna. There's work. like a few that work. Like Monster would work, but Speed that's Racer. Even... Okay. This, yeah. Those. Are Okay, that's pretty good. <laughs> we have to we have to review that. By the way, I've been saying that for oh, fifteen yeah. years. Oh yeah, we're gonna do that. Years. Yeah, um, we're gonna audible what we planned already. No, just kidding. No, dude. Yeah, Joel Davidovich Pompo Pompanet is uh, the the Hulefu, and then Mister Feeney. Um, yeah, dude, jump right in. Those are two, like the two main characters in the movie. Uh, this is called Pompo the Cinephile. It is by Studio Clap. Studio clap. Director is uh, Takayuki Hirao. He's also did, he also did the screenplay, the storyboard, and was the art director. Um, he's also been he's got a huge resume. Honestly, he's done a lot of storyboarding for a lot of episodes here and there for uh, Attack on Titan. Yeah, a bunch of stuff. He was the ED boarder for Spy Family Part Two, um, and he was the episode director for the first par- episode of Paranoia Agent. Um, and then animation director was Yasuhisa Kato and Naohira Osugi. They've done a bunch of stuff as well. Naohiro's resume is very small. Uh, I, I feel like they're just getting started, you know, and, and stuff. So that's kind of cool. This is based on the manga by, uh, based on the manga by Sho Sugitani, uh, Pompo the Cinephile, Ega Daisuke Pompo-san, also known as the artist, also known as Ningen Plamo. Uh, if you've never seen Ningen Plamo's work... Um, they have, they do have a Pixiv account, which I am clicking follow right now. And I just got to say this, which is, this is another reason why I wanted to review this movie because it's based on a, a manga that debuted on Pixiv that you can only read on Pixiv. So for those of you guys who don't know what Pixiv is, um, I was only, I've only heard about it a couple years ago. Um, it's a place where artists upload their work okay um it's a japanese website but there is now like an english worldwide version of it which is the version i use um and it's a lot of it's a lot of anime artists on here a lot of japanese artists um ones that we've mentioned on this podcast before okay um takia jn thed bunch of them are on here um kk motsu uh yona yamamai Mika Pikazo, all of them. Uh, I follow all of them because they're fucking amazing. And um, b- bunch of there's so many, so many other other artists, artists on here. I made an account on here. Um, I have no followers, but I a bunch of people are favoriting my stuff, which is awesome. Uh, but yeah, I followed Ningen Plamo, and he like did a lot of Gundam art and mechanical design, and then he started doing this manga. Uh, he started releasing it on Pixiv April 2017. In 2018, it was nominated for a Manga Taisho Award. And Seven Seas Entertainment publishes the manga in North America. And an omnibus series of short stories began in February 2020. 
There's also a spin-off manga called Fran the Cinephile, Kana the Cinephile, and uh, Mazurka the Cinephile. And so this anime film is based on the first one. Um, it has been collected in four volumes, which you can read. Uh, it's like three, yeah, oh, it's three plus an omni, so yeah, four, I guess. Um, you would call, I guess you would call it like a comedy slice of life. Um and if if I had to say it debuted on a magazine, it's Pixiv magazine. But really what you would do is you could just go to uh, Shosugitani's or Ningen Plamo's profile and read the manga. You can read the manga there. Um, but you, actually probably not because you'd have to read Japanese. So never mind. You'd have to go to a different website. Just go to Seven Seas Publishing, okay? Just go to Seven Seas. Uh, but yeah. So here's the the thing, okay? Uh, Joelle Pompanet, better known as Pompo, is an extremely talented movie producer, having inherited her grandfather's connections in cinematic eye, despite her promising outlook, Pompo refuses to produce anything other than trashy B movies. That is until she hands her assistant Jean Feeney a script for an ambitious screenplay about the life of a composer and announces that he has earned his first directorial credit. Determined to make the film shine, Jean throws himself completely into his work. However, with an overwhelming workload and a deadline only days away, an aspiring director struggles with what must be sacrificed in the name of creation. Yeah, it's really funny because Pompo is like this little, she's like this little lolly girl, and she, but she's like this. Yeah, she looks like a Pokemon character. <laughs> she does, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or like a like a Doremi character, maybe. She looks like a like a Pokemon trainer. Um, yeah, she's a trainer, dude. She's a fucking uh, leaf le- leaf gym leader. She's a leaf gym leader, dude. She's her first, her main Pokemon is Chikorita. Um, yeah, dude. Like she, she is like this little lolly, and um, Jean is her assistant. You know, he's that he's the go to. Go give me some food, bitch, and then he does it. And she notices that he's you know you know like Midoriya from uh, My Hero. And how he writes down everything about heroes, and he's like always writing in his notebook. That's literally Gene with movies while he's on the set. He's writing all these things down, how things work, little strategies here and there about filmmaking. And he's this big cinephile, right? And so uh, he goes up to, like, at the beginning of the movie, he goes up to Pompo's grandfather, Peterson, Mr. Peterson, who owns Peterson Films. And he's like, why'd she choose me? And she's like, he's like, well, she must see something in you. That's that's why. Like, so he's like, yeah, but there's so many other assistants who like know this business more than I do and who do their jobs better, you know. And it's like, yeah, but there's something about you, man. And then that's he quickly finds out there is something about him. She can see that he can see, like, all these. He's got this eye for film, and so she hands him a script, and it's the first film that she's ever wrote. But she doesn't want to make it because if she does, it won't move her. So she hands it to him to direct, and that's that's the premise of the movie. And it's amazing. It's fucking cool, man. It's a cool movie. Initial thoughts. That's my initial thought. What are your initial thoughts? Nick, you want to go first? Sure. Uh, okay. I didn't expect anything going in, I guess. I, I had no idea. I did like the cover art of uh, Pompo. She she has a really funny character design. She does. She she doesn't look like any other characters in the show, actually. <laughs> she has, yeah. She has her own unique design aside yeah. from everyone else. Yeah. She's like a, like, hilariously anime. Um, Gene kind of has his own unique design, too. But... Yeah, he looks a little different because he, he's all tired-eyed. But it turns... Whereas but his... the, well, the, the, it's to differentiate him from the actors, but... The, but yeah, uh, but his stature and everything else is the same. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. sorry. Go ahead. This, let's see, it was kind of a bubbly movie or like a uh, like a hopeful movie, I guess. Yeah. More of a, a not, uh, I would say it had like a like a happy ending overall, and 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 uh, the whole thing was meant to be uplifting. So that's my initial thoughts. Um, I I enjoyed it. I wouldn't. I would probably give it a lower score than you guys would at the end of the day, but it was it was decent. And if you, I don't know, if you just want some short term inspiration or something, you're trying to do a project, then this might be worth checking out. So there you go. Mm-hmm. Dean. Um. So this 
movie kind of went under the radar for me. I didn't even know that this movie came out Mm -hmm. and everything like that. So I had no idea what this movie was about other than it was about, you know, a movie producer. That's it. Um, I absolutely loved it. Like, I really, 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 really liked it. Um, it's, it's things that I'm super interested in, like behind the scenes stuff. You always catch me if, if I'm watching a movie, especially if it's on like a DVD or Blu-ray and there's like behind the scenes stuff, like special features and, you know, stuff that happens that is filmed while making a movie. I'm, I'm watching it. Like, I just like that. Oh yeah. I like that stuff too. I really, really like um, the movies that made us that that uh, Netflix series, I love that series. I mm-hmm. want them to do more because I enjoy mm. listening to uh, people making these movies and you know them telling their story, them saying, yeah, you know, the investors thought you know we weren't gonna be able to make this movie. They thought that this was a stupid movie, blah blah blah. But lo and behold, it is like a multi million double dollar movie now. <laughs> Sixty so... billion double dollars. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I like that stuff, and that's what this movie was like. This movie was about you know behind the scenes stuff that. Um, the movies that made that made us is is pretty much like so i really liked it i loved every minute of it i had goosebumps practically throughout the whole entire thing so yeah i think you all know when i'm going to score this already so (laughs) i think uh and that was another reason why you know why i wanted to uh review it right because like (laughs) i have never read the manga you know i number one i wanted to review because things that become anime or anime films or fully realized productions based on pics of art is always amazing to me number one number two in this case based on a pics of manga number two um it's why we started cinematography right danny because like we love movies oh yeah i love movies like yeah and And I think, like Nick said, like the three of us, we love that. We love that extra feature stuff. We we love that stuff. That's why we like talking about anime the way the three of us do, is because we love that production shit. And so, like, um, you know, I, but and it's why it's why we started doing cinematography too, so we could talk about movies. You know, it's like it's why we have the AX episodes, and things like that. So, um, I what I didn't know, right, is I didn't know. I thought I didn't know it was going to tell the story that way. I thought it was going to just kind of do like the life of an, of a director and and they make a couple movies and they kind of just montage through it or whatever. And it's like no, it's about this kid Gene and Pompo believing in him and then um you know, he makes the whole film right there. Um, but the way they did it was so well. It was th- they told a story within a story to tell a story about dreams and how we relate to film, how we relate to media, and how we relate to entertainment, and how he relates to it. Yeah. So it was this. It's kind of like how how he relates to it as an artist, who the movie's for as an audience. So we could relate to it in the same way by watching the story that he's making in the story to relate to it so so the audience relates to it so we know how to relate to it but still relate to it in our own way and then we can show okay, it to our neighbors friends big, brothers big kids yeah, so I'm, I, yeah. <laughs> I just i was trying to figure out a way to keep going like so, I mean, you should <laughs> take a note from the director and hit the delete key a few times yeah yeah <laughs> so so i know that you know that what danny knows that when i found out what you know <laughs> <laughs> just like keep going. If I was a director, I'd delete the whole movie. <laughs> that's how that's how uh, uh, stoic I am. And then, yeah. the, then when they actually go see the movie, it's just the title, and then go straight to the credits, and then everybody ten stands up like genius. <laughs> yeah. genius. You get the fucking Shia LaBeouf amazing. clap. <laughs> yeah, fucking amazing. 
Um, but yeah, no, or dude. No, like, Citizen Kane, I think. <sighs> Citizen Kane. Um, I hate that movie. Yeah, that movie is... It was, uh, movie sucks. It was an odd movie. Very that influential, mo- but not super <sighs> enjoyable. Not for us. You know what I mean? It's not for us. I watched it, yeah. It, it, it's interesting. I don't anyway. watch it for my film class that I took in college. Ew. Did you what? pronounce it film just to make your teacher mad? Film? Film? <laughs> no, I did not. Let me tell you why this is a great film. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think this is very well crafted movie between the characters and, uh, I like the insert songs a lot. The choice of music. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. A little background info too, really quick. Uh, an anime adaptation was announced in 2017 later revealed to be an anime film on September, 2019. The film is animated by clap and directed by Takayuki Hirao said that already. Uh, Shingo Adachi designed the characters um he did the character designs for all of like the Mega Man anime um Sword Art Online anime uh and uh like Rico Licorice Recoil um pretty much every Sword Art Online he did the character design for and uh yeah so that's who that who that's who did that and then which is nice to see right because he he definitely did a different style than he did in those in Sword Art and then like Oriko, you know what I mean? Those are kind of similar. Where in this movie, you he definitely had a different kind style of designing them. See em. that style though? Yeah, in Mistia's character design, you could kind of yeah. see it. the actress. The actress, yeah. yeah. You could kind of see it. Um, it almost and- reminded me kind of like Trigger esque. Yeah. Especially with, with uh, Pompo. Pompo kind of looked like a, a Trigger character like a Imaishi oh, character. oh yeah, yeah she looked a little bit like that yeah, yeah, yeah she yeah. did kind of look like a, a sushi or Imaishi character yeah um but um it or was no del- she looked like plastic nissan oh yeah you guys plastic remember that nissan. plastic nissan i don't think i've watched that it's very short it's like 20 minutes the whole thing okay. yeah um kenta matsukuma is did the film's music um then there was a bunch of insert songs um and then the film was gonna premiere in march 2021 uh, after being delayed once to the due to the pandemic Lovato, and then it was delayed again to June 2021, um, and then G Kids acquired the rights here. But yeah, we didn't get it until April 2022. Uh, 2022. Yeah, 2022. About a year ago, yeah. So, um, for the I, I thought that was uh, super cool though. I um, th- th- when he was. It kind of showed the stages. It 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 did it in a way. It kind of did show don't tell, right? It showed the process of making a film without showing too much of it. It was just enough where you got the idea, and because it wanted to really show how the characters were making it. It was about the characters. It was mm-hmm. about Pompo being a producer. It was about <clears throat> excuse me. It was about Natalie being an actress and actor and. Martin Braddock, the greatest actor of all time, um, and Gene and um, Alan running into Alan again after all this time and all that stuff. But um, I, I I I really liked the way the the way it went. It was really cool. It and also just I mean I really liked the part with Alan. Um, I did which is like not an, know where that was going. I know, right? It was like, kind of weird. What is yeah. this B plot going on? Like, I have no idea where this is going. Why oh, is this the uh, kid the here? banker guy. Yeah, yeah, the investor. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then, but then, like after a while, because like I kept seeing him because you see him obviously in the beginning when like he bumps into Gene, and then you see him again when Natalie uh, was heading to her audition and she was crossing the street. You see him there too. And then the third time you see him, he's on the plane when they're heading to Switzerland. So I'm all like, what is this? It's like, why do you keep sprinkling this bitch in here? Why is this person here? here? Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, is this a B plot that's going to happen soon or whatever? And then it ended up happening and I didn't know where it was going with it. But then all of a sudden, like, you know, Alan was was sitting and they were like filming and he just so happened to see Gene and he was all like, I know that guy. 
like that yeah. whole like i know him like <laughs> yeah <laughs> so yeah and then that's kind of like where um i'm like okay now everything makes sense like okay well, i get it and that's now. that's what i wanted to kind of mention next is the way they sprinkled alan in there more and more each time is to kind of give you that feeling of when you cross someone at the store and you're like, do I know that person? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then you think yeah. about it more and more in your head until a month later, you realize who it is. Yeah. And the film did that. Yeah. And I was like, wait, what? It was so cool. Like this film, this, the way this film was edited and boarded um, is meant to do it in a way to make you invoke real life feelings by using like, by using like raw filmmaking techniques and it was just like what the fuck like that is so genius it's cool because we're watching a movie about making movies and it uses these these old techniques it uses it even uses the old the old kind of um animation transition uh to when it cuts to the next scene it's like an animation of like a <laughs> the windows you know I mean? movie maker transition yeah, <laughs> yeah i'm just kidding like, I well, kind of, you know what I mean? Like it, it kind of was like, it was really cool. Like for example, when they were flying to a country to like film on set or whatever, it would be like a plane, a little tiny animated plane go across the screen, and the trail it leaves behind opens up, and it's the next scene. Or yeah, it's like a wiping it or whatever. A wipe. Yeah, Is that yeah, what yeah. That's called? I don't know. Or when yeah, yeah, like a wipe, like a screen wipe. And when they were driving in the rain in the beginning, and then the windshield wipers go up and. When it wipes, it wipes away the previous scene to to, to reveal the next scene. It's like little things I did like not that. Notice that, Jesus, dude, Almost it was looked cra- away for a second. It was, dude, it was crazy. I was like, this 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 movie's going crazy right now. And bef- before we get into any spoilers, if we are going to, which I don't think we really need to, to be honest, I think you should just watch it because it's not really a movie that's like has anything. Yeah, super I think crazy. you probably don't want to spoil it. Yeah, yeah, there's no need to spoil it because like it could be light. Yeah. And I think you should just watch it because, like, it, it it's there's there's nothing really to spoil. Number one and number two, it, it's better if we don't. No, you could you y- could spoil some of it. Uh, yeah, there's, I there's mean, parts that can be spoiled. Yeah, there, there's so one part I'll say is this: when they're actually making the movie, this is just fucking amazing, by the way. And I didn't know who this animator was until I looked it up when after watching it and everything. But um, Tetsuya Takaichi. So okay. Speaking of how they how they how they made this movie, there's the, the the animation in the film is what you'd expect from an anime film. Okay, it's very nice. Um, it's 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 smooth, yeah, it's ninety you know. minutes. They only got to animate ninety minutes, <laughs> and and also, which is a, a part of it. But like, but also like it's it's not anything super crazy. But then, but then it gets to the parts where it's like. It's showing the movie that they filmed. So there's a scene where where Gene is like, I want to film a scene in the rain. Let's do this really quick. Because it starts raining in like the mountains where they're filming. And it's showing the scene. It's showing the scene that they're filming. Yeah, like like you're watching and, the well, movie. Well, yeah, yeah, it has and, to though, movie. right? And That's not surprising. Like it has to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like but what I'm saying is when it's showing these scenes the perfection in the realistic animation and movement is turned up to like volume 11. Oh, I just, sh- I just saw the plane wipe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I'm, I'm watching it at two times speed right now just to refresh a little bit to show you that like, it's supposed to be like actors acting on, on screen and it, it just looks like way smoother. They start throwing mud at each other. Right. It's supposed to be like a comedic oh, yeah. scene in the movie. Yeah, that one. Was and the cool. animation is just like, it's, it looks like, um, like almost like they they motion captured, they filmed some actors jumping around and drew over it. You know what I mean? Um, and it just looks some fucking amazing. It's so fucking wild to me. And uh, Tetsuya, Tetsuya Takeuchi, he did a lot of animation for um, Sword Art Online and uh, uh, a bunch just a bunch of stuff. He's done a bunch of stuff. And that sequence itself was just really wild. Anytime it showed a part where you were watching the film they were making, which is called Meister, by the way. Um, it was like that, and it was just really fucking cool just to kind of show you uh, that that you were watching the movie. Because obviously, like, you're watching the actors talk to each other 
when you're watching Pompo the Cinephile. But then when you're watching Meister in Pompo the Cinephile, you're you're looking at those same characters. So it's just kind of like, you know, let's just do it like this. That, which almost like you didn't have to do it, but like they did and it made it cooler. I don't fucking know. And they also did a lot of like, they did a few analogy type kind of things. Um, or visual, I don't know what you, know, if you would say analogy, but like when it shows uh, Gene cutting film. Oh, that was my he, favorite part. He's oh, like yeah, the uh, like him yeah, imagining him, doing it. him imagining actual actually editing. Yeah, like thing. he's like cutting like, film reel with a sword. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the sword is in the shape of the razor tool from like After Effects and Premiere and Final Cut. And it's just like, okay, that's really cool. Like, you know what I mean? He's like cutting it and like telekinetically moving that's, film. That's kind of when and... he was really in his in his zone. He, mm-hmm. Because he was putting himself in Meister and how, like, um, the character, I forget. Uh, the, the, Dalbert. Uh, was it Albert? Dalbert was the name. Oh, Dalbert. Of the Dalbert. That, that was, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Or Dalbert uh, or whatever. Yeah, Dalbert. Yeah. Um, and Dalbert. Like, him, him, like, playing the piano and stuff and, like, you know, just hit the aura that was coming off of his body. That's yeah. exactly what was happening with Gene when he was editing and everything like that. And then it cuts into like him just imagining like him just with that little like splicer and just cutting the film and stuff. Um, He's seeing himself as the composer character that Martin is playing. Yes. In the movie. Yes. Cause the pro the premise of the movie is, uh, a, a musician, a conductor. Washed up um, musician. Kind of washed up. His, yeah. his wife and kid left him, so he goes to the Alps on a retreat to, like, find his... It's like a, how Estella got her groove back type trope, but, like, done really well, I guess, as you could say. But, like, yeah, it was really cool, man. It was... The way they showed everything in this movie was super cool. And honestly, like... And the joke that, that Nick mentioned earlier, the 90-minute thing was um, Jean wanted to use the screening room at the studio, and she's like, oh, what are you going to watch? She's like, oh, I'm going to watch this. And she's like, oh, I hate it. He's like, why do you hate it? He's like, it's too long. Yeah. It's too long. <laughs> and This is perfect for Nick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, that's how, that's, I agree with that. He's and right. She's, she's like, I like movies that are 90 minutes or whatever. And, um, the <laughs> this is a, this is a, a spoiler probably so don't listen to this part because it's like the very last line in the movie and it's like very significant but like so close your ears for like 10 seconds five seconds but like they're like oh what's your favorite part of the movie and gene goes oh yeah that it's 90 minutes <laughs> exactly exactly and, well, then, and then it cuts and then, it, and then the movie ends <laughs> and then the movie ends and then if you yeah. actually if you're watching this on whatever like from actually when the movie starts from the first scene yeah not counting the, credits not counting credits this movie is actually 90 minutes and so which to be fair most animated movies are about 90 minutes because it's, it's expensive to do longer than that hour 20 hour 35 whatever but this is exactly 90 and it's just like that's just really little things like that little thoughtful things like that throughout this whole entire movie along with everything else they did in the, the storyboarding and Things like that. I just was like, oh, man, so this good. is so fucking cool, dude. Yeah. So dope. I really, like I said, you know, I, while I was watching it, you know, I did not, I didn't even know this movie existed or anything like that. I had no knowledge of this movie at all. So I went in blind and I'm just sitting here watching this thing. And there are times in the movie when Gene is watching um, the monitor while um, they're shooting and stuff, and Gene will sometimes get like, uh, like a jolt of electricity go through his body. So that's kind of like like him, um, getting goosebumps really, and that's uh the goosebumps of like of excitement, like God, this is so good, like that kind of kind of feeling. That's exactly what I was feeling while I was watching the movie. So I really felt. I was Gene while I was watching it because I'm like, I'm feeling what he's feeling while he's watching these actors do their job and everything like that. 
So I really enjoyed it tremendously. The only, I feel like the only one nitpick I have about it though is that Jean needs to like go to sleep for like a week to get rid of those bags for under his eyes. Yeah, the hey, whole, for some people that's genetic. <laughs> the whole yeah, the, like the whole movie he had he's got bags under his eyes. These freaking bags under his eyes the whole entire movie. Um ugh, it that was just like does this kid not sleep? <laughs> well, it's funny too because like that's probably the most serious thing that happens in the movie is that he faints from overwork and then yeah, gets to the hospital. Yeah, it's a serious um, thing. It's an actual yeah, thing. And that's how they work in Japan, apparently. <laughs> God. Yeah, apparently, too, and uh, one thing I've heard in Japan, which I don't necessarily know if it's true, but one thing I've heard is, like, if you take a nap at work, they just let you sleep because, you know, it's not, like, rude to fall asleep at work or bad to fall asleep at work. It's, like, normal, I guess, for some salary men and stuff like that. In a that. way, that's a good thing. I wish they'd let me do that shit. Yeah, but, dude, let me take a nap right quick, you know? But, um, yeah, dude. I, but they work longer hours. But anyway. Oh, yeah, that's true. They do. They do. They do. Unofficially. They're, they're, officially, they don't, but unofficially, they do. Yeah, yeah. Not on the books. Um, but, yeah, dude, I honestly, uh, well, I'm going to wait till we're all done saying whatever to give. I was about to give a score, my bad. But, like, I, you might already know what I might score it, I guess. But, like, I, you know, just freaking, I don't know, just watch it. Anyone else got any other thoughts? Because I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to spoil anything else that I already have, to be honest. Be, but like, it's just like, God damn it, I love it. I thought it was really cool. It's not, it's not the most like amazing fucking thing. Like you know, I'm not like, oh fucking, you know, whatever. But like, it's it's really cool. And I, I didn't. The only are there thing anything? Re- it, okay, so I know we're praising it a lot, but is there anything that we want to nitpick about it? Let's ask ChatGPT. Let's not. Um, I'm just kidding. <laughs> let's not. <laughs> Um. Y- yeah, I mean, it I wasn't some nitpicks. Some nitpicks. I guess one nitpick of mine is that I guess it wasn't for some people, and maybe even for me a little bit, it wasn't dramatic enough. Like maybe there could have been more, but maybe they thought that'd be unrealistic. Like if they zhuzh up the drama a little well, bit. I think it was unrealistic overall. Okay, what he do you succeeds mean? on his first film, and he gets all these awards. The Academy was it the Academy Awards or was it like a world? So it was a It's a fictitious Hollywood. Yeah, it's a fictitious Hollywood. Not, are they in Japan? Not, no, they are no, not. No, they're in, in Yollywood. This is this is California. Oh, okay. Well, they're, okay. In, they're in Yollywood. Because what happens in in real life with the Academy Awards is they make they make you wait <laughs> to get your awards. Pretty much, they they rarely give awards to like first time actors or directors or whoever. And, you know, you, you have, like, these all-time greats who have, like, one award or whatever, or, like, four of them or whatever. Yeah, but anyway, yeah, so it, it happens, too. I, I guess that's possible. It's possible that you could get it. But he's, like, he's just too young to, to get all this stuff, all this success right away. That's that was the unreal, unrealistic part. But I, I get what they're, they're trying to show. I feel it's like, like you also have you to You can look, do great things. You also have to um, look at, you know, who Pompo is. She's practically she's a prodigy and she is the granddaughter of a great producer as well so like yeah nepotism. having those connections <laughs> are, yeah. is, is she greased what, some palms yeah literally <laughs> having those connections in the entertainment business is like a know, very yeah. fortunate thing to have yeah there is so. that i would say that's a nitpick is that they were too successful it would have been nice to see like Maybe they win like one award, you know, but they won. I guess we're spoiling. This is a, this is a little bit of a spoiler. They won like multiple, and it would have been cool to see. Oh, they won uh, an award for whatever something or other, and and it like gives them hope, you know, to keep going, or or like maybe maybe even just nominated. You know what I mean? Because that's a huge achievement too. But also, the way that the awards work are like super corrupt. Like you you basically just like pay them to nominate you, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> Um, so yeah, this is a very like rosy, rose tinted version of how all of this stuff would go. And like, how would they do all that reshooting in two weeks? Like they'd have to get everybody's schedules and stuff. I guess that's possible, but cause he had to re he had to redo a bunch of stuff and they put all the editing on him. I know sometimes that can happen, but for like a big production, I don't know how much it costs. Maybe, I don't know. 
But yeah, I mean, it, if it's he, a small production, I can see you editing it by yourself. But like, if it costs a lot of money, you're not letting one person edit it. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I would say it's not. It wasn't that big of a production, right? Because that was that was, it was. Yeah, it kind of was, but kind of wasn't. Because like, it was produced by a, a, a film studio that's like popular. But like, everything that Pompo has been doing before that was just like B movies, like that were easy to shoot. You could do it all in the studio, whatever. And then. This one, it was just two actors, it's one like crew. It's like an indie movie, probably. Yeah, it was one actor, one that. crew, and you know. Well, there are a couple of actors. Uh, where were all the Marvel heroes? That's the other unrealistic part. Come on. <laughs> where, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> where was the after credit scene? Yeah, where's where's <laughs> Nick Fury? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, after God. after 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 he goes into to Pompo's office, like I want to tell you about the Avengers. Yeah. Uh, um but yeah, like no, I I I get that. Yeah, there there was like things that were that they did to make it seem like it was realistic, but yeah, it really wasn't. Um and, and I guess like I did like I did like how they interspersed like you were saying, they interspersed some of the movie scenes with like his life um uh, like when he was begging to get more time to to edit the movie. Um Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, that yeah. That was good. Yeah. But I don't know I feel like they could have interspersed the movie even better throughout the throughout this actual movie. You know what I mean? Like Millennium Actress did that, and that's not really fair to compare it, but like Well, it is one of the recommendations. Yeah, that's not fair at all. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> like if well Millennium Actress did it, why can't everybody do it? <laughs> but <laughs> um I don't know, it's hard to explain. I, I didn't really feel any connection to the actual movie Meister. You know what I mean? That was <clears> just me. I get what he was doing, but it's like I didn't even know what Meister was really about. It was about a Meister, but you know what I mean? Like it, it was, it was. I don't know. Like and and the 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 main actor was like very. He was like a very nice guy, and like nobody really had any flaws in this movie. Actually, if you think about it. Yeah. No. Yeah. So that's interesting because, like, in in the best, like, to to feel for characters, you want them to have some flaws. I guess I mean the main character is kind. Of, he's like a dwee, he's dweeby and he's sleepy, but like it's not that bad. So, um, well, I mean, his flaw was is that like he couldn't see the flowers from the trees and the birds and the bees, and like he didn't realize it until he was editing the film and he saw himself in the film. No, that was had, great. That was a yeah. great part. Yeah, because like he spent most of his life just paying attention to movies and not making friends and then and that, and that would have been interesting if they even explored that more where they're like oh okay what happens if you give up everything you know to pursue your hobby in a movie and like did sure, he yeah, even I, live did he even live his life because all he's been doing is watching movies you know what i mean yeah I can or agree does that, that count as living your life maybe that's an, maybe that's a whole separate movie by itself actually <laughs> but right yeah I see what they're going for. It was, this was supposed to be an inspirational movie. They're supposed to be like, okay, you can do it. You just gotta fucking delete every, press your delete button a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, no, I, I get that. Mean? I get that. That's that's legit. That's legit criticism. I think well, that, those yeah. are kind of my main ones. Um, but yeah, I, I did like it. It looked good. It sounded good. I, I don't think it had any like. Honestly, it's kind of fucked up. But I think Makoto Shinkai has better songs in his movies. So there you go. Hey now, <laughs> give me hey some rad now. wimps. If hey I don't now. have rad wimps, I'm not. I'm not crying. This is what this dreams, dreams, dreams are made of. Made of. <laughs> Danny knew what I was doing. <laughs> Danny knew what I was going for. No, I. I didn't have one dance number either. Okay. What are you talking about? The beginning of the movie had a dance number. <laughs> I'm talking in the middle of the movie. I want them to do sound of music shit. I want them to be da- singing the rain. Say- okay. Well, okay, but no, wait, wait though, wait though. Here's why you're a bitch, Nick. Because <laughs> the insert songs by by Ema and KAF or CAF with the insert songs, the, when they when those songs came on, there was a little bit of a music video situation happening on some of those parts. Maybe not throughout the whole song, but like it did feel like we were watching a music video when the insert songs came on. I feel like. I don't know. One of those, uh, Kaf, K-A-F, Kaf, uh, she's a Japanese virtual singer. Um, she did the OP, or ED-11 to Black Clover, the first ED to, uh, Yurisai Atsura. Um, man, all the songs in here were great, honestly. I liked all the songs in here. 
I got to I got to I'll, I'll I'll play the opening in ED obviously cuz Yeah, I wouldn't yeah. say that was a dance number. That was more just like the OP basically. Yeah, the the OP and ED are really good, but like the songs in the middle were also really good. I and I the you know, I think they were great. I think uh I think you just are a butt sniffer and you just you just hate me. What, Nick, why do you hate music? It's just beeps and boops. <laughs> Look, they just get up in there, they plug in the strings. What do you do? <laughs> what do you do? I could do that in my sleep. I make music on the toilet every day. I make I make music on the PC do every it, day. It's a <laughs> symphony. <laughs> Eat a can of beans, sit on the PC do, whip out the PC deal. Oh my god. No, I I, yeah, no, those are legit criticisms. I, I think you are a fart knocker, but yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, hell yeah. What about uh, scores? Let's score it. Let's score this bitch. I think we've, I think we've said enough. I think we've covered a lot. We covered how it looks. We covered some of the music for a tiny bit. Um, Nick had some legit criticisms. Um, character design we talked about a little bit. Uh, some some will have. What do you guys score it? What do you what do you what do you what are you thonking? What do you thonk? Do we want to do? This How is my do question. Do we want to do uh, letters like tiers? Ugh, I hate or, tiers. Like, the thing with numbers is that everybody's numbers are stupid. <laughs> well, everybody's but then numbers are, are easy stupid. to understand. Yeah, everybody's. But tier, you can at least be like, okay, if I give something a six or a seven, be like, oh, that's a fail. Because you know, seventy percent is like a C or whatever. You know, people think that's shitty. You know what I mean? Yeah. But that might be good. You know, so I don't know. Whatever, I'll do whatever you guys want. I'll pick that. I'll do whatever you guys want. I give it an A, A, A minus. Give it A minus. Because although it's really, I thought it was really amazing. It's the story is something about something that I love and that I can relate to the characters who also have the same love for, for film and everything like that. And it's, it looks amazing. Um, and no, you know what? I lied. Give it a plus what? a plus two it, grades. The, 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 the only reason it's not an S tier is because of Nick's criticisms, which I kind of agree with. Um, I understand that it didn't need to be that way. Cause obviously it's in a fictional version of Hollywood. It's in a fictional version of, it's in a fictional world completely. So, you know, it's kind of a little more ridiculous, you know, the whatever, you know, but like the details are not always what, but then there were some other things that were trying to be realistic. And that's what was kind of like the, the juxtaposition of the two maybe felt a little weird, maybe. Um, so yeah, a plus, but everything else, the way it was boarded, the way it was animated, um, the feel goodness of it. The story was really cute. Um, Love the character design. Adachi did great. And uh, shout out uh, Ningen Plamo. What about you, Danny? Um, I'm giving it a 10. I loved it. I was having a grand old time while watching it. Um, I want to find the Blu-ray and own it. So... I want to own it. I'm giving it 10 out of um, Natalie's uh, teeny tiny booty uh, out of 10. She does have a little booty. She does have a bit little booty. Okay, Wait, are you not... talking about boots? Booty, her butt. Her oh, I thought, you, I thought you were talking about like, her booties. Like she had her, little boots. No. Her derriere. <laughs> Like little cat booty. Her glute. Uh, you want me to go uh, medical yes. term? Her gluteus maximus. Her glutes. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna give it a pretty good. That's my score. Pretty good. Oh my god. We all have different rating systems now. <laughs> pretty good. <sighs> uh, I, I am. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean. It, it's energetic and it, ha- it you know it shows the the creative uh, expression uh, difficulties and all that and it's inspirational to a degree but it's a little bit a uh, little bit lacks plausibility here and there and it didn't it didn't give me as many emotions as I would have liked I sure. guess it, it didn't like 
grabbed me by the heart and just like you little it didn't do the Homer Simpson like squeezing Bart's neck, you know what I mean? It didn't do that to me. So <laughs> okay. Sure. Sure. You little shit. You little shit. I don't think he calls him a little shit. He's like, Why are you little I don't know what he says, but yeah. I think he always says why are you little, I think. Yeah, yeah. And then he just starts choking him. Terrible. Yeah. So the, movie, the movie didn't choke me, so pretty good. It didn't good. choke me. It gets a pretty good score. <laughs> All right. Shout out. Shout out. Okay. Yeah, I recommend everyone watch it. Easy 90 minutes. Very, very... And the pacing is nice. I should have... We didn't say that. I, I personally think the pacing was was perfect. It was I a didn't... little fast. It was 90 minutes, though. So what do you expect? Right. <laughs> yeah. What do you want? What are you doing? What are you going to do? Um, but yeah. Um, loved it. You guys should watch it. I think it's a... I think it's a nice little anime film, nice little piece of production. I think it's really, really cool. Um, that being said, let us know if you watch it and let us know if you like it. Or if you've already seen it, let us know what your score is. Um, I'll leave a question in the Spotify and then you guys can answer it. Um, that being said, I love you guys very much. Thanks for listening every week and supporting. Supporting, supporting, supporting. I appreciate it. Every, every listen that you guys... Every time you guys listen... Honey Bear gets fatter. So, I mean, that's... Wait, what do you... What more do you want? I mean, that's... That's A... That's S-tier support right there. Fat cat. She's fat. She's a fat cat. So, thank you very much for listening. I appreciate it. Uh, I love you guys very much. That's been Danny. That's been Nick. And we've been the Anime Summit Podcast.